Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Paymar, and you are listening to The Big Shift, the podcast that looks at the massive changes our world, our country, our politics, our economies, and our institutions are confronting. Today, we're discussing a subject of critical importance to our society, business intelligence and how it impacts capital investments that drive the economy. To discuss the big shift the world economy is experiencing is Bill Hutman, the founder and managing director of Global Source LLC, an international investigative business intelligence company. Bill is a former investigative reporter whose work has appeared in such prestigious publications as the New York Times, the Times of London, and the Harvard University Press. Bill is also the author of Conversations, Thinking About Talking, a book about the importance of actually talking to each other, what a novel thought that is, and learning from people, and not just accessing information from social media. Bill, welcome to The Big Shift. Glad you could find the time. Jim, it's great to uh, be here and great to be uh, having the opportunity to speak with you. You, you know, Bill, Global Source operates uh, all around the world, and, and you have offices stretching from Washington to Cyprus to Dubai, Cape Town, South Africa, just to name a few locales. Can, can you give the audience some definition about your business? What types of clients does Global Source work with, and, and what services do you provide? Well, in, 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 an, in an overview, Jim, I would say, what our company does is provide uh, intelligence and information to our clients. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're doing work for a range of clients, everything from major law firms um, to major financial institutions, banks, hedge funds, and so forth, to large manufacturing companies. Um, so across many sectors in terms of businesses, we also from time to time do works for governments um, uh, in different p- parts of the world. And what we're doing is, is, you know, you think of an intelligence service, what it does for, for a government, we're doing that for, for pri- again, for private sectors and also for governments. So what does that mean? We're helping uh, our clients uh, understand a, a potential deal that they're looking at and they are having their lawyers and their accountants doing the due diligence, they're having us do what's called the off the book due diligence, things that aren't necessarily out there and easy to obtain and the lawyer would find in a public record or so forth. They're having us dig deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're looking at issues of competition. A a company is competing with another company and they want more information on their competitor. So we're looking at like issues connected with competition. Um, Right. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's just extremely, you know, one thing about the business is it it, it touches on many, many different areas and many different topics. So one day we can be doing a project in oil and gas. Mm -hmm. The next day it can be in some high tech, you know, issue that we're working on. And then and the following day, it's some obscure political issue and, and, you know, somewhere around the world. So it's, it's, you know, we're touching on lots of different topics. I mean, you're involved in litigation, investment advice, uh, competitive intelligence, uh, internal investigations. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. It, it, it is. And it's, it, it's, it, it's, you know, it's an interesting field. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, you know, just to give you a little bit of the history, because I think it is, I think it's, you know, maybe, maybe it's, for me as someone in it, it's somewhat interesting. It's relatively new, Jim. This is a business that started in the, in the 80s, mm-hmm. really, um, primarily it's in the U.S. It was U.S. companies, a few U.S. companies that started doing, providing these business intelligence um, uh uh, 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 services. I had the, you know, the honor and the privilege, uh, and I think it was like 94, 95, I happened into a job with one of the, one of the sort of founding companies in the sector, a t- company at the time that was called the investigative group international. Uh, there's a gentleman named Terry Lensner who ran the company and I lucked into a job there, as I said, the ni- in the nineties, and that's how I sort of got into the business. But it's developed since then. So it's, it's, you know, this is, you know, it's just fairly standard now 
for companies doing you know a business deal to be hiring firms like ours it sounds kind of wild and different but it, this is pretty standard now well listen i mean the business world a, a business has to do due diligence before it does any kind of deal before it hires any individual uh, when it has any kind of relationship with the government, uh, you've got to know what's going on behind the scenes or you could get yourself in some deep trouble. Yeah, exactly. And look, I, you know, you know, I like to, you know, I, I like to think of, you know, I, I do think, like you said, you have to you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what business transaction you're getting into. And I like to think of my father's generation. You know, my dad always tells me about deals that he would close with the shake of a hand. Right. I think about it and I have the kind of, I talk more to my dad about it. Well, yeah, it was a shake of a hand, but it's a guy, you know, my father grew up in, you know, I, and I also grew up in Washington, D.C. And it was, you know, he knew the, the person or if he didn't know him, he knew someone who knew him. It was all very close, very personal. In our business world today, in our world today, almost any deal, even small deal, small transactions, small disputes, you know they're they're going to train they're going to touch larger air, geographic areas areas yeah. outside of our familiar familiarity. So, you know, I like to think that our service isn't needed because the world has become a, a worse place. I just think it's become a global world, and because it's become such a global world, you need to use these services. So I try to be optimistic about it. Yeah, people need to do these due, due diligence not not because someone is you know, necessarily supposed to cheat them, but they just, that's, you know, they live in a global world. You have to check, check, check these issues out. Yeah. Bill, given that from where I sit in here in New York, it, it seems the entire geopolitical landscape is, is going through a big shift. We, we have a war in the middle of Europe between a superpower, Russia trying to occupy and control Ukraine. We have saber rattling in China over Taiwan, militarization and a technological competition between the U.S. and China. And then we have uh, shifting sands in the Middle East uh, with Israel. And I know you have a, your base in Cyprus. Uh, so you you're, you know, you're in that big cauldron of uh, problematic situations from time to time. Uh, and and uh, what's interesting about the Middle East is, uh, you know, the shifting sands becoming closer, uh, Israel becoming closer to Saudi Arabia and uh, the United Arab Emirates. And, and then we have uh, the tumult, the political tumult in Iran. And at the same time, they're getting closer to developing a nuclear bomb. I mean, you and your associates, you've got boots on the ground. What's what's your view of the global big shift, especially in the areas where you operate? Well, look, look, Jim, that that's that's given what the the issues that you've just outlined, right, which span now the globe. I think it's 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 difficult, if not impossible, to make a gen to, to have too, too many generalizations in terms of how you know how you know what in terms of developments and i think mm -hmm. one of one of the keys i think of our business and you, and i think you, you you know hit the nail on the head there is our base in cyprus is not coincidental cyprus is small little island in the mediterranean but it's really in the center of these regions that are going through great great transition mm -hmm. eastern europe russia lots of eastern european and russian businesses who have connections here in cyprus that's one of the reasons our company is based uh, in, in Nicosia. Same thing with the Middle East business and its connections to, to, to Cyprus and, 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 and uh, what's happening in, in, in the island. So, but, but to try to answer your question, I think at one level, certainly in the, in the near term, and when I say the near term, six months, what we've seen happening over the past year, two years, of course, there's, there, and we all see it. There's incredible change and incredible uh, uh, transitions taking place, um, um, and 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 I I feel almost embarrassed to say this, but I, I think we maybe do need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. For businesses like ours, it creates business. I mean, it's a, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a it's it's a, and and I think you know maybe it's something we should talk about because, you know, one of the you know one of the I think concerns that we all have is, okay, if there there there's conflicts happening. I wouldn't want to say for good reasons, but I think we always worry about people, quote unquote, taking advantage of uh, uh, a bad situation. I don't mm -hmm. think our I don't think our business is doing that. 
but I think we're actually helping companies understand these difficult situations. But, but certainly I think the world, it, you know, if you're doing business in the world right now, um, it, it's extremely challenging with mm-hmm. all these move with all these moving parts. Right, right, right. I mean, the dynamics have changed so much. I mean, and you take Cyprus, for example. I mean, Cyprus is a divided country in itself. I mean, you've got the Turks up north and the Greeks down south. I think Nicosia, which is where you're based, is the only divided capital in the world. And uh, <laughs> you, you're, you're operating close to Lebanon, close to Syria. You're not that far from Ukraine and Russia. Those business people, you know, gravitated to Cyprus. I mean, there's got to be a lot churning in that region right now. There, there absolutely is. And I think, you know, if, if, if we want to talk about, you know, little Cyprus for a second, but in the bigger perspective, let, let's, 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 let's look at this issue of a divided island, right? Mm-hmm. And and Cyprus now has been divided for you know, like over fifty years, and if you had asked when the island was originally divided in the seventies, and if you had asked anybody then if this was going to last this many years, they probably would have just laughed at you, right? But now right. fifty years later, the island remains divided. So now let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at the Ukraine. Okay, mm-hmm. so. You know, I think what we need to be smart enough to ask ourselves right now is, OK, um, you know, the Ukraine actually has already been divided in a way since uh, Crimea was was invaded by Russia and the world kind of sat back and didn't do anything. Right. Yeah, that was that was 2014, uh, 2014. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. you know, a little bit of occupation already in the Ukraine back in 2000. But you know, kind of everybody kind of looked the other way and forgot about it. Now we have the Russian invasion. Uh, uh, elsewhere into into the country. Mm-hmm. I think now the question is, does this become the future of the Ukraine? Right. Is this the future where we have it actually, a, 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 you know, a divided Ukraine? But but beyond that, Bill, I mean, you know, some people talk about this as being a proxy war between NATO and the United States uh, against Russia. Uh, at, at least that's how Russia perceives things. Uh, Ukraine was a independent country, a European country. And then one day they have, uh, you know, legions of tanks moving into their country and Russia claiming that Ukraine belongs to them. Now, if you're doing business in that part of the world, how do you operate in this environment? Very carefully. Yeah. Um, but but um, yeah. but but I, I think h- how you operate is you operate carefully in the sense that you are being very careful about who your partners are in business. Um, you're doing very careful about your, your employees and where, where if, you ha- if you had a company in the Ukraine, you've had to relocate to Poland, or you've had to relocate somewhere else in Eastern Europe or in the Balkans. Um, you know, you're acting in a way with care, watching out for security issues, for business continuity, continu- uh, issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is this question I was raising earlier is you're, you're watching back to see, well, are things going to settle down in the Ukraine so I can move my business back, back into the country. Mm-hmm. And, you're, and you're watching these issues all very, very, uh, uh, you know, carefully so that you so you can plan your business decisions, decisions in an intelligent way. And the same holds true for Russia. I mean, we don't know what the future of Russia is. I mean, there is a cap on oil, uh, they've started developing different relationships in the world, getting closer to the Chinese, uh, shipping a lot of commodities to India. I mean, the whole landscape seems to be changing. And, and uh, it, it seems to me if you're a business executive, the, you've got to lay this all out on the table and go, now what? What do we do now? How do we operate? How do we make sure that we don't you know, lose our shirts by having a relationship with either one of these countries. And what happens next? How do you read the future? I, it, it seems to be an impossible situation if you're, a, if you're a CEO of a major company operating in that region. Well, I, I think I'd like to be, look at it from the perspective that in the longer term, 
to answer those questions that you're raising. Anybody that claims they have the answers to those questions is is fooling themselves and trying to fool you know fool you, fool whoever they're telling. Right? No mm-hmm. one, no one knows. But what you can, I believe, uh, uh, understand is possibilities in the near term. Look at mm-hmm. specifics. Look at possibilities, and and certainly in the near term, make intelligent business decisions. Uh, based on on an analysis of the situation. I'd add one other thing, I think, in terms of certainly our approach is you always need to look at the bigger picture. I think one of the problems, and certainly we face this in the intelligence, private intelligence, private business intelligence businesses, there's really tons of information out there, lots and lots of information out there. Mm-hmm. And, and the trick is cutting through the noise and understanding what what's important, what's the important information that's going to help me make that business decision that I need to make, and to cut right. through the cut through the noise so that you can make that analysis and make that decision. Well, but Bill, if you're the CEO of a large corporation, and and I know that you have to think about the near term, but you also have to think about the long term because if you're making a major investment, let's say in a chip factory. It could take years to build that. How do you determine where you're going to build that, how you're going to go about financing it, especially when things are unstable? Uh, If you're operating in Asia, the Middle East, you know, what are companies looking to understand? What kind of intelligence are they seeking and how do they use the intelligence? How valuable is Intel in making investment decisions? Well, um, let me let me give you a, a let's say an, an, a, an extreme example. Um, so an extreme example would be um, if you are a uh, financial institution trading in commodities, then intelligence about oil markets, about gas markets, um, and understanding trends. When will new pipelines be opening up? How is uh, uh, security factors in a particular country related to production or transportation uh, 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 going to affect, uh, going to have, going to have impact? Packed. That mm-hmm. kind of information for the commodities traders within that financial institution is incredibly valuable, right? They're incredibly valuable because they're trading off of that information. So there's one example where, um, uh, you know, there, there's immediate term, high, high financial stakes uh, in, involved. Uh-huh. You mentioned that you do work a little bit with governments. Uh, and so you don't work strictly with just companies. From, But from a corporate perspective, having intel about, what moves and motivates governments uh, seems to be, and from where I sit, you know, kind of vital for management and making investments. Uh, absolutely, and and I think there there are there are a number of perspectives on understanding government policy and government stability, um, uh, uh, and and how that's going to affect your business, right? So if there is mm-hmm. a potential regulatory issue that's coming up and understanding what the process is, who are the players are making that decision. That's crucial to your business decision in terms of, um, uh, in terms of uh, government stability, right? There's going to be a change right. in government. Right. Uh, and there, there's, is a government going to collapse? How is that going to affect our businesses? Those issues are vital. And those are, those are exactly the type of issues that we have clients, uh, uh, you, know, at, you know, coming to us certainly, certainly about. How many people do you have on your staff working on given projects? I guess it, it, you know, it's determined by how large the project actually is. But uh, you know, is it is it a team? Is it one person going after one uh, investigation? How how does it actually work? It 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 it's a, it's a team. It's it's teamwork. So so you uh, in, in 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 our business, what normally happens is you have you know project managers. A project manager and a potentially an assistant manager who is who is running the project. And then they have their team of researchers uh, that's working together with them. And, and and there are a number of tools that are being used. Those tools include everything from databases that firms like ours have access to. We do very very thorough reviews of public records. Um, we where we're doing. 
uh, reviews of information that's on the dark web uh, and out there. We're also doing, Jim, a lot of, and this is certainly, you know, I know your background as a journalist and also as mine, a lot of the work is also done in interviews. You're, mm -hmm. you're developing sources and speaking to sources. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a combination of, uh, you know, to put it simply, desktop research plus field research. I think that's how, how, how I how would you know, look at it. And, and, and in your book, Conversations, uh, you talk about the importance of that one-on-one -on -one relationship with an individual and uh, developing a rapport with an individual. And you probably get more information that way than you would, you know, doing Google searching and searching the dark web by getting to know the, the individuals who are actually the players in these deals, correct? Yeah, certainly, you know, people, you know, human intelligence, what we call it in the field, is critical, right? Understanding how to develop sources, understanding how to speak to sources, um, you know, we believe is tremendously, tremendously important. Um, that's why on our teams, former journalists, are a big part of our team because we know as journalists, we, you know, that that's our livelihood, right? Developing sources, conducting interviews, building rapport, uh, maintaining rapport. Um, uh, and also I'd like to think being extremely factual. So mm -hmm. not being embarrassed to ask a question, not being embarrassed to ask a follow-up question. You know, a lot of people ask, and, 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 you know, I'll raise the issue. It's like, well, you know, how in the heck can you guys cover so many different issues? Right. You're doing and 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 I actually think that's kind of the point, right? We're not we don't come, I'm not an expert in almost anything. I think the only thing I'm an expert in is dig is, is research and intelligence uh, work. That's our expertise. So what we're good at is digging knowing what questions asked and following up and, and so forth. So I think that's that's the critical point. And yes, human intelligence is very, very vital to that. I mean, it's, it's key. Yeah, um, I, I would, I would add though, I mean, if I may, maybe just one other thing, I, you know, certainly though, and, and, you know, you know, you say Google research, of course, you know, doing a Google search, no one needs to hire us to do that. Right. But, right. But I think where, where we and firms like us have an expertise that, that our clients do uh, uh, respect. And I think do come to us for is there is, having the expertise on how to use the internet, how to use database research, you can find a lot more than the average person just doing a, I mean, an incredible amount of information actually is out there. And part of the trick is understanding how to conduct that research and how to you know, conduct it and how to analyze it. Bill, just a couple more questions because, uh, you know, these interviews go awfully fast. Can you discuss uh, technology a little bit and the role it's playing in our companies and nations operate today? I mean, we've seen numerous instances of uh, cyber warfare, cyber attacks that infiltrate companies' infrastructure, sometimes shutting them down. What do you see and hear about this increasingly dangerous environment? And tell me about uh, the component of your business, which is called asset tracking. Okay. I, I think certainly in terms of the, the, you know, inter, you know, you know, the issue of the internet and the issue of, of the cyber crimes, uh, that is certainly something we see more and more of. Um, I think we all re are reading about it in the papers. There's not a, there's not a company small to large that's being affected by, by, by these issues. I think any company now, even as individuals, we all need to be very careful uh, about our information that we have on our computers or information that we're, that we're sharing. And certainly we see that. Where our company comes in, we are not in cyber security folks, right? Mm -hmm. but, but the but is, is that all these issues, at the end of the day, it's people who are doing the hacking. It's mm -hmm. people who are, so what we're hired and we're brought in is many times to complement the folks who are doing the, the cyber the cyber side of the work. And we're helping them to understand who were the people that were doing the hacking and who was who hired them. That's where the, our, our, our type of research comes in. The other thing, Jim, you asked about in terms of the asset searches, which is sort of a, a different field, is, is, you know, lots of the projects that we're doing are driven by uh, a party who's trying to understand 
the financial wherewithal of another individual or another corporate, you know, a person or a corporate entity. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, so, so uh, you know, our, a lot of our research is understanding corporate structures, is trying to trying to fo you know, follow the money to see where people are hiding their funds. Um, and certainly that that's a, that's an integral integral part of what of what we do. Bill, last question, because we really are out of time. Intellectual property, it, uh, you know, is certainly a concern for any business. Yeah, actually, it's their lifeblood. Uh, how does Global Source help a company maintain the utmost secrecy to ensure a competitor doesn't steal vital information? Our, our firm works on the side of trying to help companies understand who is stealing their products, stealing their trademarks, uh, and so forth. So we're out there um, both through desktop research as, as well as being in the field for helping them identify folks who are, you know, who, who have, who are using, who are counterfeiting their products um, or otherwise, uh, uh, you, know, you know, mainly counter, oftentimes counterfeiting their products or otherwise uh, acting in an illicit way vis-a-vis -vis their, their, uh, their products. Seems to be a very, very tough business, uh, Bill. I, 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 as a journalist, I mean, research is very, very critical, and it's very, very difficult sometimes to get to the core of the of the apple, so to speak, and find out what's going right and what's going wrong with a company, where they should be investing, where they should be staying away from, and working with governments. Uh, it's a, a very interesting field. And uh, uh, Bill, as usual, never enough time, but we'll have you back in the future on the big shift because uh, the world is shifting, you know, as we speak. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Th th thank you, Jim. I very much uh, enjoyed, our, enjoyed our conversation. And that was uh, Bill Hutman, the founder and managing director of Global Source LLC, an international investigative business intelligence company based in Cyprus, in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. I'm Jim Paymar, and you have been listening to The Big Shift, available wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening today, and stay tuned for the next episode of The Big Shift. It's coming soon. Stay tuned. <laughs>